Hello family, we thank the Lord for today. We bless him for his goodness. We bless him for another day he's made for us to be glad and to rejoice in. Today, my prayer as I continue to lift up Ghana before the Lord is concerning those who devise wicked plants. To give some context, I want to share an article, excerpts of an article I came across on the Ghana web website. It was published on the 10th of April this year, and the title is The Level of Wickedness by Some Ghanaians is Without Limit. It starts off by saying, why are almost all Ghanaians that wicked, if I may ask? I can't get my head around it, no matter how far I try to find out the reasons for the inherent wickedness of the Ghanaian. Almost every Ghanaian on this earth claims to be religious of some sort, either Christian, Muslim or idol worshipper, with a handful of them being atheists. However, they are almost all so evil-minded and blinded by the quest and determination to amass immense wealth, whether legally or otherwise, within the shortest possible time. Why is this so? There's another paragraph that says, On returning from my six weeks holiday in Ghana, I had arranged for the purchase of some smoked fish to the tune of 1,100 Ghana cities. A family friend in Ephidiasia Shanti gave the money to her friend, a fishmonger who goes to Yeji, a town in the center of Ghana in the capital of the Pru East District of the Bono East region to buy me some smoked fish. At a, at a relatively cheaper price. I was happy with the quantity that the money was able to buy me. Nevertheless, I was shocked to the bone when my wife invited me to the kitchen to be shown some cement papers found stuffed inside some of the fish as discovered when she was about to prepare some soup. The papers had been stuffed inside the cut pieces of fish during smoking or grilling. It is so perfectly done such that one could hardly detect the papers when buying the fish from the market in their said cuts piece form until broken up into further pieces. The papers could be said to be to blend in with the fish. Having shown me the papers removed from the fish he had already broken up for the preparation of the soup, I asked to see further confirmation or evidence. I asked her to pull out from the cooker over where we have been keeping some of the fish in storage. To my surprise, one of the pieces she took and broke up in my presence was found to contain folded cement paper, which could never be detected until you break up the piece. I will end it here. It's a very long article, but this hopefully gives some context as to why I feel that this particular prayer point is so important. My passage of scripture, once again, is going to be from Proverbs chapter 6. And this time I'm focusing on verse 18. A heart that creates wicked plans, feet that run swiftly to evil. I'll read verse 19. A false witness who breathes out lies, even half-truths, and one who spreads discord rumors among brothers. And it ends there. And to give context to anyone who's not been following the podcast in the last few days, these were highlighted in response to verse 16 of Proverbs 6 that says, the things, the six things the Lord hates, the seven that are repulsive to him. And one of those is a heart that creates wicked plans. In some versions, it says a heart that devises wickedness. Father, This is your word, and we know that, Lord, your word is true. Your word points to how you want us to live, how you want us to honor you in our day-to-day walk. Father, Lord God, the story, real-life story, that was shared in this article that I've read, is just one of many other similar stories or encounters people have had in their dealings with individuals in the nation of Ghana that attest to the fact that consistently there are so many people who devise wicked schemes, wicked schemes that involves corruption, wicked schemes that involves bribery, wicked schemes 
that involves people always seeking an opportunity to disadvantage another. And sadly, as was shared in this article, that there are many people in the country of Ghana who consider themselves to be religious and therefore adhere to the tenets of whatever faith. And we know that Father God, even aside Christians, most faiths talk about how they are or their followers are to show love one to another, are to treat one another with kindness and so on. So to think, oh God, that many people, in spite of their religious affiliations, continue to devise wickedness because of their own selfish gain and ambition. Lord, clearly it is an abomination in your sight because your word has said these things are detestable to you. So for the detestable practices, Father God, that God Almighty continues to be carried out in the nation of Ghana by individuals, Father God, which you consider to be wickedness. We ask, Father, for your forgiveness, and we ask that, God, you will show the people of Ghana mercy. But, Lord, though your word says that you are forgiving God, forgiving our sins, Lord God Almighty, when we confess our sins, because of your grace, your word also says that your grace does not abound, that we carry on in sin. So, Father, today I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, you will cause, O God Almighty, a revival or whatever you need to do, Father, to bring the many people in Ghana who continue to devise wicked schemes. Let there be an awareness. Let there be an awakening that God will cause them to have a change of mindset that, Lord, will cause them to stop these wicked schemes and devices that they're always plotting for those who are perpetrators of these um, wicked schemes, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus for the many people, Father God, who have fallen victim to these um, wicked devices, O God Almighty, that men and women, young and old alike, Father God Almighty, have perpetrated against one another. For those, O God, who have been victims, we pray that, God, you will show them mercy for those, O God, who may still be suffering, O God Almighty, and negative consequences for those reasons, Father I just pray that you will heal their hearts from the pain, from any trauma, Father God, that they may have suffered. That is for those who may still be alive. There could be a possibility that as a result of the wicked schemes that people have orchestrated, some have even lost their lives. For those, Lord God, there's nothing that we can do or say because they are no longer in the land of the living. But for their friends and family members, God Almighty, who may still be suffering the consequences, Father God, of those wicked schemes, Lord, aside the fact that they may have lost loved ones, I just pray that you will heal their hearts, you will heal their brokenness, because your word says, Jesus, that you heal the brokenhearted. So may you heal them. And for those, O oh God, who have lost property, who have lost um, wealth, who have lost resources, Father God, in your mercy, May you give them another opportunity, Father God. Restore to them that which the enemy has stolen from them in Jesus' name. Where people have lost faith in their fellow Ghanaians because of even some of the example that God was, was um, alluded to, this particular example in this article. May you bring a change that those who have lost faith and trust in their fellow Ghanaians, Father God Almighty, a time will come where there will be a change, a shift, that they will no longer even, O oh God Almighty, just trust one another. But, Father God Almighty, because there will be a change in the hearts and the minds of individuals, Lord, people will begin to trust again in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're the only person who is able to turn the hearts, O oh God, of the wicked. Father God, to a heart of righteousness, a heart, O oh God Almighty, that seeks after that which is pleasing in your sight, Lord. So, Father God, though it may seem impossible, your word says, with you, nothing shall be impossible. So may you, O oh God, this day, look upon the hearts of the individual Ghanaians, Father. For those, O oh God, who do not devise wickedness, but Father God may seem to be of the minority, may you cause them not to give up in doing good. For your word says that in due season, when we have not given up in doing good, we will reap a reward. So in your, in your loving kindness, may you remember all those, O oh God, who have refrained, Father, from even, O oh God, devising wicked plans in their dealings with one another or with people. 
and show them your love, show them your mercy, and may you pour out the blessings of heaven upon their lives for their, their desire and their commitment to be upright in all of their ways and in all the things that they do. Let their light so shine, the Father God Almighty, their lives of God Almighty will speak volumes and would even be a living epistle to those, O oh God, who continually seek to devise wicked schemes in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We're personalizing it by saying, I do not have a spirit of fear. I have God's spirit of power, love, and self-control. The Lord bless you, and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.